Welcome to the latest roundup of news and polls from Ipsos Mori. And as we start to unlock and send our children back to school, the latest REACT report that we do of Imperial College, and thank you to the tens of thousands of people who take part in this study each time, shows that overall infections are down by a third. The R rate is now well below one at about 0.86. And overall, the prevalence of the disease has fallen by 50% since January. So really, really encouraging. It's, it's, it's down across all age groups. And partly because of that, confidence in the NHS to handle the virus, particularly as the number of people in hospital fall and as the vaccination programme rolls out, is now back to eight in ten of us confident that the NHS will cope. Only one in five worried now about the NHS's ability, despite very, very long backlog of um, operations, of course, mounting up while the, while the service deals with the virus itself. Overall, we've now got nine in 10 people who say they're either going to or will take the vaccine when it's offered. That's higher up from uh, 83% in December and good rises across all age groups, including the young, which is really encouraging. There is a difference by ethnicity and you can see that black, Asian and minority ethnic Britons are about twice as likely, for example, to say that they need more information about the vaccine or indeed that they would be anxious at the thought of getting a vaccine for COVID-19. So for all sorts of reasons, trust in authority is lower among uh, ethnic minority groups in Britain and indeed in many countries around the world. And it's clear that targeted communications and particular outreach initiatives will be important to get overall vaccination numbers in all communities uh, up to 90%. But again, there's progress in all age groups and among all ethnicities in terms of vaccine hesitancy that we can very clearly see now. So that's encouraging. And partly because of the vaccine, the proportion of people who now say that Britain's heading in the right direction rather than the wrong direction uh, is almost the same. We've got 36% who are positive, 37% negative about the direction of the country. But generally, people are negative in Britain. So the fact that nearly as many are positive as negative just shows that the country is feeling much more cheerful as we find a way out of the lockdown and as we start to vaccinate people. We've got a third now vaccinated, of course. With a new budget, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, remains the most positively regarded politician in Britain, although it does seem to have drifted back slightly. And I don't know if that's because of the 1% pay rise for the NHS being generally seen as somewhat derisory. We'll see how this plays out. But his ratings are now not that dissimilar to those of the Prime Minister, who has 35% positive towards him. But of course, the PM is still well ahead of the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. And, and generally, the Conservatives are experiencing a vaccine bounce in the polls at the moment. We'll see how long that's sustained for. Elsewhere, of course, the royal family have got some problems of their own with the interview by Oprah Winfrey of Meghan and uh, Prince Harry. And we looked just before that interview was broadcast at the overall favourability or popularity of different members of the royal family. The Queen, is, uh, the Queen and Prince William lead the pack. Uh, and actually, Prince Harry's ratings, although they've dipped down, remain well ahead of Princess Anne or Prince Philip. And indeed, Meghan's ratings as the Duchess of Sussex actually haven't changed at all, at least before the broadcast of the interview, from where they were two years ago. So we'll see how all that plays out. Um, overall, uh, on International Women's Day, uh, most people in Britain recognise that there's more to do in terms of closing the gender pay gap and indeed in achieving gender equality. But we've got only 28% who say the gender pay gap should be a key priority in terms of coming out of the COVID-19 crisis. It's much lower, interestingly, than in other Western European nations. Generally, people are favouring fo focusing on flexible working and support for women against violence and abuse, which will be important in, in terms of what matters for women. Uh, and given that women suffered uh, worse mental health and more job losses during COVID-19 than men, uh, you know, you can certainly see that they will need some support. But clearly, we have got some way to go in eliminating the gender pay gap in our society, and it isn't necessarily even our top priority. Overall, most people in Britain say that they're comfortable with a whole host of things in terms of unlocking. So going shopping in other shops, going on holiday in the UK, going to the hairdresser. Um, most of us say that we're going to be comfortable doing these things. There are one in three who are worried about sending their kids back to school um, or indeed staying overnight in a friend's house. But of course, we aren't doing that until June uh, on the current lockdown. And this, this was just this poll was taken in February. So the public remain cautious, as we know. And we saw we've seen throughout the pandemic by a margin of between three and four to one, more people tending to say that government measures 
were not strict enough than too strict. And so I think you can see again that although we will, we will unlock, there will still be a considerable caution among the public. And after three lockdowns, who can blame them, perhaps? That's all for this month. Do look at the website to see what else we've looked at. We've looked at um, how people feel about letting people spend up to £100 on their contactless cards up from £50. And we've also looked at the impact of poor quality housing, particularly on older people for the Centre for Ageing Better. There's all that and much, much more. That's all for this month. Thank you. <laughs>